Hello everyone. Today we'll be taking a look at Kings Mills exothermic welding products. First, we'll take a look at some key features of the mold. And then I'll demonstrate to you how we actually go about making a joint. Kingsweld exothermic welding molds and weld metals are an integral part of an earthing system. As a reminder, a proper earthing system should have a low resistivity path to earth with the capacity to carry high currents and should be made from materials that have excellent corrosion resistance and strong mechanical strength. The Kingsweld exothermic line fits right in with those requirements. Exothermic welding is an aluminothermic reaction that takes place between an aluminum powder and a copper oxide. The aluminum powder reduces the copper oxide, and in the process, it produces a huge amount of heat. So, let's get started by first taking a look at the mold. The mold comes in a package, comes boxed, with the part number clearly mentioned, along with the description of the conductors to be welded together. This, in addition to the powder size required and the mold type. You'll find a corresponding metal tag on each of the molds themselves, with the part number also shown, the, what, the conductors to be molded together, and the weld metal that's required. The graphite mold itself has three important characteristics. The reaction chamber, or the crucible, the tap hole, which is that hole you can see here at the bottom, and then the weld cavity, where the actual conductors are welded together. At Kings Mill, we machine our molds to suit the specific conductor size and joint configuration that you wanna make. So for each mold, as we mentioned, you'll find a metal tag that specifies um, what that mold is meant to put together. And as such, you can make sure you're working with the right mold. Next, let's take a look at the weld metal cartridge. At Kingsville, we supply our exothermic weld metals in pre-measured doses that are ready for use in your construction. They are packed in plastic cartridges that each have two compartments, a larger one at the top and a smaller one at the bottom. The larger one, which is covered by a green label, a green cap, contains the copper oxide, and the second, smaller compartment, contains a finely ground aluminum powder. So, by now you may be wondering, how do I know which joint I need to order? Well, at Kingsville, we've made this relatively simple. In our catalog and on the website, you'll find a chart, a diagram showing a series of different connections. With those connections, under each one, you'll find a page number or reference table you can go to. Going to that specific reference table, you'll find a chart that shows the A to B, the conductors that will be welded together, the price key, the weld metal to be used, and the handle clamp along with finally the part number. We make this decision process as easily as possible. So we try to make it as straightforward as possible. So we've covered the mold, weld metals, and handle clamps. But what else do you need? Well, before doing any sort of exothermic welding, you should make sure that you have a pair of safety goggles, safety gloves, and a leather apron, which I currently have on, to protect you from stark sparks that might fly during ignition. Additionally, it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of sealing putty around. This sealing putty, which is like sticky, uh, which, is, which is quite sticky, it's like sticky Play-Doh, is actually used to seal off the gaps and prevent any leakage from your mold. Lastly, the cleaning tools are also a good thing to have. By taking proper care of your mold, you can ensure that it'll last the 50 to 60 joints as required. So, additionally, while these molds are not made of glass, the molds are made from graphite, which can break if it takes a hard impact. So avoid tossing the mold aside after use and place it gently so as to prevent unnecessary cracks or chips to the body. So now that we've touched on some information about the mold, let's take a look at how a joint is made. You'll first want to attach the handle clamp. And then you want to make sure that the 
securing screws are properly put in. This will make sure that your clamp doesn't slip. So now, next, open the cavity using the handle clamp and place your components, which here is two 70 square mm cables that we're gonna be molding together today. So I'll put them in. Now, if your cables are not clean, you'll wanna use a Y-shaped brush to make sure that they're cleaned off. This here is a Y-shaped brush. Just rush them through, just like this. So, close the handle clamp, and then you'll wanna apply sealing putty on the holes to protect against leakage of molten fluid during the reaction. Now you'll notice that I don't have my safety gloves on yet, but that's also because I'm still not lighting the, the reaction. And you may not be able to see how I'm applying it, but really what you wanna do is you wanna make the, you wanna roll the putty into a kind of a, a lengthy, like it, so you can get this kind of application. Okay. Got one more to apply here. All right, once your sealing putty is in place, you'll want to swivel open the lip. And first, you'll want to insert this disc at the bottom to cover up the tap hole. With each carton of weld metals, you'll not only have 10 cartridges, but you also get an envelope that has these discs inside. So simply put, we put the disc at the bottom. This will melt and it will become part of your joint. Then we open the green side of the King's Weld cartridge. And we're going to put the weld metal in. Next, we turn the cartridge over and we carefully remove the, the red cap, which covers the starting powder. Now, before you do this, make sure you realize where the lip is. There's a pre, there's a pre cut out groove here. So we open it up. We're gonna put some of the starting powder on top and then we kind of leak it out to here. So now we're ready to light the fuse. Now make sure that your surrounding area is clear and that you've got your safety gear on and then go ahead and spark the ignition using a flint gun. Now the reaction will go off. Let the mold sit for about 20 seconds and then open the mold and we'll go from there. So now that we've let around 20 seconds pass and the mold has cooled down, we open the mold using the handle clamps. Hold on. So we remove our joint, and as you can see here, we have a perfectly welded joint. Now, the last step, is to clean out the inside. So what we do is we use the scraper tool to clean out the slag so that we make sure our mold is set to go. Making sure all the slag is taken out. And now our mold is set for another one. You're ready to make your next joint. The sealing putty here can be removed 
but also will not affect any conductivity of your material. And if you notice, the sealing putty prevents any leakage of any material. So that does it for us here today. I hope that you found this instructional video helpful. And remember that you can find more information on our website or by getting in touch with any of our sales staff who can help you with more information on the matter. Thanks and stay down to earth.